Learn how to control the exposure triangle for depth of field and proper exposure. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. Hi, this is Rich Harrington for Adorama TV, and welcome to DSLR Video Skills. We're going to tackle a very important subject today, and that is the exposure triangle. Now, if you're a still photographer, you've probably heard of the exposure triangle, except when it comes to shooting video, there's lots of limitations. Plus, one of the main reasons people love these cameras is the shallow depth of field. However, you don't get the exposure triangle right, you won't get that effect. So we're going to walk through how it all comes together. Now, with this triangle, there is essentially three parts. There is the ISO, there is the aperture, and there's the shutter speed. And all of these are things you can control on your camera. Shutter speed should typically be a relationship to the frame rate you're shooting. For example, if you're shooting 30 frames a second, you're going to want to shoot at a 60th. If you were shooting 24, a 48th or a 50th. Basically, take the frame rate, multiply by 2, and put a 1 on top and this will give you the most natural motion. Next is going to be the overall aperture. Now, this is going to depend on the type of lenses you're using. The faster the lens, the wider that aperture gets, the more light that comes in, which is cool. That's going to give you low light sensitivity, give you that nice bokeh look that people like when shooting lights in a low light situation, and really lets you achieve that shallow depth of field or filmic image. Of course, the more you open up the aperture, the more light comes in. And this can get problematic as it leads to exposure problems. Now, to balance this out, the last thing we have is ISO. And I like to think of ISO as basically being sunglasses. This will adjust the sensitivity. So as the camera is too sensitive, we could change the ISO, lowering it so it's less responsive, and this will darken the image, increasing it, and it will artificially boost it for a low light situation. Let's take a look at a real world shooting situation. We're going to go from f22 all the way down to 1.8 on this fast lens and I'll show you how I compensate and what it does to the shot. Now you see here we're at f22. This is going to give us our deepest depth of field. Lens closed down really far, not much light is coming in. In order to balance this out, I need to adjust the ISO. I'm at 640, 800, 1000. 1250, 1600. All right, that's pretty good. I've got the exposure I want. Go ahead and do your movement. You'll notice essentially everything's in focus, including the basketball court, including the trees, including the people way the heck back there. This is not why you shoot DSLR video. Chances are you will not shoot F22 ever. And this is one of the things to realize is you need to make a change. All right, you can hold for a sec. All right, we went to F14. Notice we're still at a 60th. That's because I'm recording 30 frames a second. However, the shot is definitely overexposed. Now that we've changed the f-stop or the aperture, I need to adjust the ISO equally to balance out the shot. So we're down to 1250, 1000, 800. You'll notice at this f-stop that some of the stuff in the far background is falling out of focus. That's working pretty well, but it's not perfect. By changing the f-stop, in this case, to f14, I easily have exposure here. In fact, I'm bumping up to 800 ISO. The challenge with the ISO setting is as you raise that more and more, you get noise. Now, ISO 800 is fine. We can always add some light and this would get rid of it, but let's go to the more filmic image and start to drop the f-stop down even further. I'm at f8. Shot's definitely hot. As we change the shutter speed, now I'm at 125 without changing the ISO. Can you go ahead and do your movement? Things are going to look really staccato in this shot. This is because the shutter speed is at the wrong speed, and we're going to see a very jumpy, jittery image. Now this is one way to correct, but we have a lot of room left. Instead of changing the shutter speed, I'm going to change the ISO. go back to 60th, 800, 640, 500, 400, 320. Looking pretty good. We've got a shallower depth of field, still have focus. Move the ball closer to the camera, take it back, and you see that it does fall out. So as the 
ball got closer and came back in. It went out of focus and then came back. Easily have proper exposure at a reasonable ISO. And this is where I would probably shoot if I was shooting action. I want to have some shallow depth of field, but I don't want it to be impossible. If your depth of field is this small, your subject moves, they're out of focus. It gets kind of tough. But let's show that look that people love for music videos or interviews, and that's really pushing it down. We've gone down to f4. This is pretty wide open, letting in lots of light. Now to achieve a proper exposure, I took it to 100 ISO, my lowest sensitivity setting. This is cool, it's working. A danger with a lot of cheaper lenses is that as you zoom, the f-stop changes, meaning that you gotta keep fiddling with the camera. This is why DSLR video shooters love primes or love their expensive zoom lenses that have a constant aperture throughout the entire zoom length. Now, this is good. Nice for an interview, I didn't have to do anything extra, but invariably you or the client are gonna love bokeh. Lots and lots of shallow depth of field, blooming, highlights, everyone loves it. Now this is great at night, but in daytime, it's gonna be problematic. Let's open this aperture up as wide as we can get it and I'll show you the problem. Okay, we're at 1.8. It also looks like we're on the surface of the sun. Okay, when the camera is this wide open, you are letting in a lot of light. Now, you're shooting a nighttime interview on a dark street, be safe, but you'll get a good exposure. This type of aperture is useful for really low light shooting, really shallow depth of field. His nose could be in focus and his ear out of focus. And you see here, it's impossible for me to get proper exposure. At this point, you got a couple of options. You can go ahead and modify the camera using a matte box or a filter. So I put the filter in place here and you see that it starts to knock the image down without width. The problem here is it's still overexposed. Now I could change my shutter speed. I'm going to go to 125. Can you go ahead and do some movement for me? We have a really shallow depth of field. The problem here though is that the motion is going to be staccato because we're at the wrong shutter speed. It's okay. I can compensate. I might be able to get away with it but it's pretty tough. So really, either put on more ND, more filters in the matte box, or go to a reasonable f-stop. So let's go ahead and adjust here. I'll take that to 2.5. Very shallow depth of field, got that nice filmic look. There you have the exposure triangle, the essentials at least. And you can think of that as a three-legged stool. You're gonna want those three legs in balance or else you're gonna end up lying on the floor. The deal here is pretty simple. Take your shutter speed, which is basically the frame rate, multiply by two, put a one on top. You're shooting low light, you might have to go to a 30th. You're on a really bright day, you might have to bump up to 120th. However, when you get beyond that natural shutter speed, you're gonna to start to see motion artifacts, might look jittery or smeary. So be aware and make sure you look at the footage playing back. Next is gonna be the ISO. You'll use that to adjust the sensitivity of the camera. Now, that adjustment will typically be driven by the f-stop you choose. The smaller the number, the bigger the hole. When you get the more expensive prime lenses or really expensive zooms, you're gonna have a wider open aperture, and that's ideal. Doing an interview, shooting action, maybe 2.4 or 4.0. Shooting on brighter days, you might have to go up to a smaller aperture, f12. As you start getting beyond that, ask yourself, why are you shooting on a DSLR? because you can get easier results on a traditional video camera. So choose the f-stop wisely, get all those factors in balance, and you'll have the proper exposure from the exposure triangle. For Adorama, my name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for watching this episode of Video Skills. Be sure to head on over to their website where you can check out the Learning Center, learn lots of great things with product reviews and additional video tutorials to help you out with your next project. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. 
Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.